Hello everyone. This is the seventh video in my video tutorial series on Unity Editor Scripting. In previous videos, we saw how to create really nice looking, organized, and functional custom inspector for our classes. We also saw how to create these custom inspectors using the serialization method. These custom inspectors are really useful and they help in uh, rapid prototyping and ease of use for our designers. Now, organizing our inspector and making it more beautiful is one thing. What if we want even more functionality out of our inspector? What if we want to do some things with our data, with our class? from right here in the inspector in the edit mode without going into the play mode what if we want to check things that may happen in the play mode and we want to check them right here inside the editor for those things we can make uh, buttons these buttons can be used in a lot of different ways the two uh, situations that I have found these buttons right here inside the custom inspector to be really useful the first one is that if you want to trigger any events that are going to happen inside the game at a certain time. So for example, if, uh, if the player dies, there is a particular sound, there is a particular animation and some text. So when you are developing the game, when you want to test this behavior, you don't always have to go to an enemy and die there to trigger those behaviors. What you can do is make a button here that will trigger player death and all those behaviors that follows player death, you can check it right here using the button. You don't have to iterate everything each time. So it acts like a shortcut to different events so it helps you in debugging in checking your code and in checking your behavior the other major use of buttons in the custom inspector is that you can use this button for many utilities or tools for your classes for example if you want to save your player in a text file for example if you want to create a json or xml or those sort of things that can be classified as tools or utilities they can be achieved using buttons in your custom inspectors these uh, the use of buttons are not limited to these two examples that I gave you these buttons are really limited by your imagination that how you can use your buttons inside your custom inspector to increase your productivity the way you add button to your custom inspector is really similar to how you have added other GUI elements like the string field or the sliders. So if you come to the inspector script, we only have to write if GUI GUI layout dot button. So now uh, we have two options to add buttons. The first one is the normal button and the next is the repeat button. So the normal button GUI layout dot button will return true uh, when we have clicked the button. So when the mouse is down, it will fire just once. And in the case of using repeat button, it will keep firing true uh, for the whole time you have pressed your mouse, your left click on that button. So in 99% of the case, you will only need to use the first function that is GUI layout dot button and it takes the name the text on that button as the parameter so let's name it uh, do something and why we have applied that if statement is that the GUI layout dot button returns either true or false depending on if the button is pressed or not so at the moment when this button is pressed this whole block inside the if statement will be called and for just for checking purpose we'll write a debug.log statement inside it let's see right. now inside our custom inspector we have this nice button and when we click it we will get the console message now in most of the cases what we what we write inside this if statement is a function that has been written to your class so you will 
mostly want to do some stuff inside your class manipulate some data inside your class so this if block actually calls a function which is written inside your player class that is the class that we are inspecting it is not a restriction you can call other functions outside of your player class but I have found that in most of the cases we are going to call a function that that is written inside our player class so to do something in our player class let's add a function here it has to be public so that our inspector can access it public void this is let's name it button call from inspector and debug.log blah from blah so when we get this message we can uh, we will know that uh, this function which is written in our class is called so in this case we will take our player reference and call that function button call from inspector right so the console message console message that is coming from the class so so you saw how you can call functions inside your player class which is the class that uh, we are inspecting from a button inside our custom inspector inside this inside this function written inside our class we can do all sorts of things so I will give you one example of how you can use this button to generate a random name for your player so suppose you have a situation that uh, you have just started developing the game and you are not sure of the player name so let's add a button here and add a script that will give you some random names every time you click the button and if you like the name you can uh, choose it as your player name so here I have created a simple script which will give you a random name chosen from a collection of first name and last name it mixes them up chooses one randomly from the first name list uh, chooses a random last name list it combines them and give you a nice little string so that string which uh, we can use as our player name so if you want to see the random name generator class it is a simple static class and we use this function get random name which re it returns uh, a string which is a collection of a random first name and a random last name so the get random first name will randomly choose a first name from this list of first names similarly uh, similarly uh, when you call the function get last names it will pick a last name from this list of last name it's a really uh, simple random name generator here we are just testing how we can use buttons uh, as an actual utility so to uh, so to call that function to actually change the player name from our random name generator what we have to do is simply call the class random name generator and call the function get random name how we can do that is because the class and the function are both static so we don't have to instantiate a new random name generator we just have to write the class name and write the function name so this will return a string comprising of a first name and a last name so let's assign it to our player name and now coming to our player inspector okay so let's also change the button name to what it actually does so yeah we just have to change the label of our button and rename it to a random name right. now inside unity what you can uh, what you can do is just click on this button random name and it, it will generate random names for your player so for example this is Isaiah Gonzalez, Maya, Howard, Elise and Diaz. You can do it as many times you like until you arrive at a name that you think is good for your player. Now this chosen name is permanent. So even if you go into the play mode, even if you close your Unity projects, this name is permanent. This is not like any change that you have made in the game, in game mode. 
Now I will very quickly show you how horizontal layouting works with buttons. So let's add our editor GUI layout dot begin horizontal and it's end tag that is end horizontal. Let's create the same button just to look at how uh, horizontal layout works on buttons. So in this case, uh, these two buttons will be equally separated inside your inspector. Even if you move your inspector, change its width. So this way you can uh, make really compact group of uh, buttons inside your inspector. So if there are some similar functionalities, like here you can have a random name, random health and these sort of buttons. You can arrange them using the horizontal or the vertical layout system. So this was an overview of how you can customize the look of your inspector, how you can create custom inspector for your classes. I haven't covered all the things that you can do, but uh, I have told you the most useful things that you will need in your projects. So starting from the uh, starting from creating uh, fields for your variables to the buttons, these things are just tools and how you use them in your project will depend entirely on you. The only advice that I can give you is try to make life as easy as possible for your designer and always try to minimize the number of things that you have to do. Don't repeat yourself. Don't do a single step a number of time. If there is something that you can automate, if there is something that you can write inside a function and the function can be called simply by a click of a button then make a button for it inside your custom inspector and if you want your variables if you don't uh, want your more critical values to be more apparent inside your inspector make it big make it more visual and always try to make the game creation process more easier for your designer and even for yourself so that you can iterate and improve your uh, game more rather than fighting with the, uh, the interface or the unity inspector so this was my last video on how to create custom inspectors from the next video onward I will talk about how to create editor windows everything that you have learned till now like the GUI layout system all the GUI elements they will be used as is when you are creating uh, editor window because I have, as I have told you in the GUI and GUI layout video uh, the only thing different is the drawable area so if you, uh, in the case of writing a custom inspector this is your drawable area and if you were to write a editor window that window suppose assuming this is our window so this will be our drawable area and how we draw our GUI elements is exactly the same